the year is 1940. Adolf Hitler visited Paris on the day after France had signed the armistice. He admired the city's architecture and visited places of interest. The Hôtel des Invalides was the second monument that Hitler did not want to miss, as he wanted to stay a moment in front of Napoleon's tomb, a character that he admired for his military and strategic talents. As a tribute to the French Emperor, Hitler ordered that the remains of Napoleon's son be moved from Vienna to lie beside his father. What made Napoleon's son, Napoleon Francois Charles Joseph, a gesture icon? Napoleon II was born on the 20th of March 1811 at the Tuileries Palace, the son of Emperor Napoleon I and Empress Marie Louise. As the only legitimate son of Napoleon, he was already constitutionally the Prince Imperial, an heir apparent. But the Emperor also gave his son the title of King of Rome. Three years later, the First French Empire collapsed. The French were surrounded, British armies pressed from the south, and other coalition forces positioned to attack from the German states. By the middle of January 1814, the coalition had already entered France's borders and launched a two-pronged attack on Paris, with Prussia entering from the north and Austria from the east. Napoleon launched a series of victories in the Six Days Campaign. While they repulsed the coalition forces and delayed the capture of Paris by at least a full month, these were not significant enough to turn the tide. Napoleon's older brother, Joseph Bonaparte, led a final battle at the gates of Paris. They were defeated, and Joseph retreated out of the city. The leaders of Paris surrendered to the coalition on the last day of March, 1814. Bowing to the inevitable, on the 4th of April, Napoleon abdicated in favor of his son, Napoleon II, with Marie-Louise as regent. However, the Allies refused to accept this fearing that Napoleon might find an excuse to retake the throne. Napoleon was then forced to announce his unconditional abdication two days later. The Allies exiled Napoleon to Elba. Napoleon saw his second wife and their son for the last time on the 24th of January, 1814. On the 29th of March, 1814, Marie-Louise, accompanied by her entourage, left the Tuileries Palace with her son. On the 13th of April, with her entourage much diminished, Marie-Louise and her three-year-old son were in Rambouillet, where they met her father, Emperor Francis of Austria and Emperor Alexander of Russia. On the 23rd of April, escorted by an Austrian regiment, mother and son left Rambouillet and France forever for their exile in Austria separated from his wife and son, cut off from the allowance guaranteed to him by the Treaty of Fontainebleau, and aware of rumors he was about to be banished to a remote island in the Atlantic Ocean. Napoleon escaped from Elba in the Brig Inconstant on the 26th of February, 1815, with 700 men. Two days later, he landed on the French mainland at Golfo One and started heading north. The 5th Regiment was sent to intercept him and made contact just south of Grenoble on the 7th of March, 1815. Napoleon approached the regiment alone, dismounted his horse, and when he was within gunshot range, shouted to the soldiers, here I am, kill your emperor if you wish. The soldiers quickly responded with, vive l'empereur, they marched together toward Paris with a growing army. On the 13th of March, the powers at the Congress of Vienna declared Napoleon an outlaw. Four days later, Great Britain, Russia, Austria and Prussia each pledged to put 150,000 men into the field to end his rule. Napoleon arrived in Paris on the 20th of March and governed for a period now called the Hundred Days. 
By the start of June, the armed forces available to him had reached 200,000, and he decided to go on the offensive to attempt to drive a wedge between the oncoming British and Prussian armies. The French Army of the North crossed the frontier into the United Kingdom of the Netherlands in modern-day Belgium. Napoleon's forces fought two coalition armies, commanded by the British Duke of Wellington and the Prussian Prince Blücher, at the Battle of Waterloo on the 18th of June, 1815. Wellington's army withstood repeated attacks by the French and survived through the day while the Prussians arrived in force and broke through Napoleon's right flank. Napoleon returned to Paris and found that both the legislature and the people had turned against him. Realizing that his position was untenable, he abdicated on the 22nd of June in favor of his son. When Napoleon heard that Prussian troops had orders to capture him dead or alive, he fled to Rochefort, considering an escape to the United States. However, British ships were blocking every port. Napoleon surrendered to Captain Frederick Maitland on HMS Bellerophon on the 15th of July, 1815. Napoleon was held in British custody and transferred to the island of St. Helena in the Atlantic Ocean, 1,870 kilometers from the west coast of Africa. The prisoner was guarded by a garrison of 2,100 soldiers while a squadron of 10 ships continuously patrolled the waters to prevent escape. He died on the 5th of May, 1821, at age 51. Napoleon II was residing in Austria with his mother. In 1818, he was awarded the title of Duke of Reichstadt by his maternal grandfather, Emperor Francis. By 1820, Napoleon had completed his elementary studies and begun his military training, learning German, Italian and mathematics, as well as receiving advanced physical training. In 1822, the four sergeants of La Rochelle were put to death for attempting to return Napoleon II to the throne, although it is unclear to what extent they were committed Bonapartists. There is no evidence that Napoleon endorsed the insurrection. Upon the death of his stepfather, Adam Albert von Nieperg, and the revelation that his mother had borne two illegitimate children to Nieperg prior to their marriage, Franz grew distant from his mother and felt that his Austrian family were holding him back to avoid political controversy. In 1831, Franz was given command of an Austrian battalion, but he never got the chance to serve in any meaningful capacity. In 1832, he caught pneumonia and was bedridden for several months. His poor health eventually overtook him, and on the 22nd of July, 1832, Franz died of tuberculosis at Schönbrunn Palace in Vienna. <laughs>